Kitagawa keeps pressing Juju and she keeps getting shut down until she offers to pay a part of the studio bill. Gojo offers to pay too. The deal is so good that Juju finally agrees to a collaboration. After Kitagawa's celebration, Gojo promises to finish the Fiery Flower Princess series for reference purposes and finds out that it's 126 episodes in DVDs. Gramps is taking a look at our boy's most recent Hina doll and tells him that doing Marin's makeup has helped him improve. The next day, Gojo heads to Kitagawa's apartment for the DVDs and gets welcomed by her wobbling melons when she opens the door. Kitagawa hurries back into the house to go get her colored contacts. She then lets our boy in, but he's super nervous because he has never been to a friend's place before. That's just sad. Dude is 15, for Christ's sake. He plans to leave as fast as possible, but Kitagawa drags him to her room to watch some parts of Fia Flow. Immediately, he sees all the cosplay in her room. His nervousness disappears. They watch Neon's transformation into Black Lobelia and her first battle against Xion, who doesn't even recognize her in her dark state. They also see Xion fighting Mirai, the protagonist, and how touchy-feely Sakuya and Suma are. They're both boys, mind you. Kitagawa soon realizes that they're having an at-home date, and her feelings for Gojo leak out. She finds him so cute and doesn't want the day to end. Unfortunately, her stomach does its thing. Again. Gojo offers to go buy something, but Kitagawa wants to cook. He's almost happy until he remembers that she's bad at it. He offers to cook, but loses both the battle and the war. Kitagawa puts on her apron and settles on making rice omelets. She's done in no time and serves our boy a portion. She's so scared that it'll taste bad, but Gojo actually enjoys it, thinking it's fried rice. He tells her it's nice, so she too digs into her meal. Our boy bursts into tears at one point in the series and Kitagawa hands him a tissue. Later on, he sends reference drawings to Juju and they talk about cost and makeup. She video calls him to explain how to use tape to change eye shape and is impressed when she discovers that Shizuki was his first outfit. She then offers to use her younger sister's photography services for their next cosplay and advises him to also get a real camera. He asks to learn from Juju's sister so they set up a meeting and invite Kitagawa to come too. They meet up at a restaurant and Juju's sister, Inui Shinju, is literally two times bigger than her. Kitagawa, being shameless, asks for her measurements. Shinju shows Kitagawa some pictures and gets praised for how good her photography is. She's also in charge of Juju's social media, but is too shy to talk to people. She expresses how much she loves Juju, and the Powerpuff Girl can't keep a straight face after that. Shinju tells them that the camera is her dad's and begins to explain the different effects of changing the lens and shutter speed of a camera. She just wants to get better at photography, but Kitagawa asks if she would try cosplaying. Shinju says she doesn't, but her eyes say, I don't know what her eyes say. Gojo makes the mistake of checking camera prices and falls sick after seeing how expensive they are. Kitagawa already made up her mind to get one though. Juju is scoping out a location, so Gojo and Kitagawa offer to come along. She then tells them to meet her on Saturday. They all head to an abandoned hospital, but Juju is the only one that's nervous. Black Lily had also taken refuge in a hospital like this one, and Gojo soon realizes that Juju is scared to enter. Meanwhile, Kitagawa and Shinju are upstairs talking about the importance of backlighting. It begins to rain soon enough, and Juju sits scared in a corner. Our boy tries to help her, but she refuses to accept it. They talk about Gojo's dream to become a Hina doll artist and Juju's dream to become a magical girl. Since hers was unrealistic, she settled for cosplay as the next best thing. Our boy asks why she chose him, and Juju explains that she envied Kitagawa's picture and wanted a dress made by her tailor. She calls it love at first sight, and it reminds Gojo of when Gramps used those exact words. Our boy bursts into tears and grabs Juju's hand to thank her. She has never held hands with a boy her age before, so she passes out after this. The next day, Kitagawa drags Gojo to the beach and he thought it was to test the backlighting. They get distracted and an eagle snatches Kitagawa's burger. keeps following them, so our boy sacrifices his chips for some peace. She laughs at his stupidity 
and they end up sharing his burger. She later goes for a dip and manages to get Gojo to come along. It turns out that he hasn't been anywhere because of how much time he dedicated to Hina dolls as a child. He admits that the ocean is beautiful, and Kitigawa suggests that they visit different places together, just the two of them, like a date. Unfortunately, Gojo thinks it's just hanging out, so he agrees instantly. Kitagawa runs away before dying of embarrassment and turns to see how happy our boy looks. She takes a picture of him just before he slips on some seaweed. She bursts into laughter and then goes to check on him. Kitagawa comes over to Gojo's to prepare Neon's black lobelia outfit and gives him a glimpse of her underwear. Ah, Dude, that was so freaking loud! Our boy loses his bearings and curls up in the corner, just like he did when she sent him a photo the night before. They move on to painting the black pearl, and Kitagawa is happy she can help with it, so happy that she almost takes off her top to try it out. Luckily, she put on the wrong bra, so she gives it a rest. Time passes, and Gojo has Inui and Kitagawa try on their dresses. He and Juju use big words to describe fabrics, but when Kitagawa gives it a go, the best she can come up with is super dope. Poor dumb thing. It's makeup time, and Juju gives our girl some tips, while Gojo uses lifting tape to change the shape of her eyes. They finish up and hand Kitagawa a mirror. She's so impressed that she wonders if she was Black Lobelia all along. Her happiness turns to gloom when it suddenly begins to rain, trapping her and Juju in the abandoned hospital. They get talking about corsets and end up taking a selfie together as they await Shinju and Gojo. They're shocked by what they see and were taken back to the day they scouted the location. Everyone else had left Gojo and Shinju alone, and he asked again if she was interested in cosplaying. He was about to leave when she admitted that she was and explained her insecurities to our boy. He encouraged her and even offered to help. She later opened up about wanting to be Suma from the same series, but she had no money and huge melons. She almost gave up, but Gojo promised to figure something out. Shinju followed him home, and he had her try out his school uniform while he fantasized about what Kitagawa would look like in it. When she was done, her huge melons burst through the shirt and removed the buttons. He sewed them back on and came up with a plan for Shinju to use some binding cloth. Unfortunately, her chest still couldn't hide after she used it. Gojo surfed the net until he came across something called a bee holder, and they bought it immediately. Yes, it was cheap. Up next was the wig, but our boy was too nervous to trim it, contrary to what Shinju thought. He then explained that everyone has their desires and their worries, using Kitagawa as his secret example. He moved on to her makeup after getting the cosmetics at stupid cheap prices. He's not a cheapskate, dude is just broke. After Gojo applied everything, even Shinju was impressed. Back to the present, Kitagawa and Juju are bewitched by Shinju's handsomeness. They can't stop telling her how good she looks as Soma. Kitagawa has to ask where her chest went though. But all in all, everyone is happy with the outcome and they take a selfie together. Shinju gets in the zone and takes three million pictures in a minute. Not three million, but a lot. They then get Kitagawa to pose with Juju, but she can't keep a straight face. Again, Juju finally feels the joy in cosplay and later tracks our boy down to thank him for helping Shinju. She offers to pay for the extra expenses and mumbles that Gojo is wonderful. Meanwhile, Shinju is taking more pictures of Kitagawa when the beeholder gives up. It tried its best and will be missed. Later on, Juju and her sister go through the pictures and she admits that she's envious of her. She wishes she had Shinju's figure so she can cosplay more people. This encourages her sister and she announces that she'll start cosplay when she gets to high school. They resolve to do another cosplay with Gojo and Kitagawa sometime. Talking about them, Kitagawa calls our boy to talk about the pictures and gets mad when she hears that he was alone with Shinju. She doesn't tell him though, you know how women are. It's summer break and their next cosplay is Veronica. Gojo had gone to Kitagawa's place to watch the bronze-skinned criminal in action. His doorbell rings and our boy opens the door to see a brown and sweaty Kitagawa. He freaks out before she confesses that it's just foundation. She then asks to use his shower and undresses while he's outside. 
Gojo brings some of his clothes for her, and she teases him about peeking. Afterwards, he blushes when he sees her in his clothes. They change the topic to dark foundation and white eyeliner. She also bought some lightweight chains and a brick background to replicate the prison. Gojo takes care of Veronica's jagged teeth and is amazed by the result. Kitagawa lifts her shirt to apply the foundation, and our boy's face turns so red that she thinks it's heat stroke. She ends up hitting her head trying to get him some water. Kitagawa takes Gojo to the men's section of Shinya Station to help him pick out some new clothes. Can't lie, bro needed it. As bro is changing, some other bro checks out his girl. He looks uneasy in all of them, but Kitagawa loves every last one. She can't get enough of him, and when he complains, she works her way into wearing matching tees with him. They continue shopping, stop for some ramen, and continue shopping again. After all of it, Gojo doesn't pick anything and apologizes for wasting Kitagawa's time. She brings up the Veronica cosplay, and our boy says he can't do it because he can't bear to see so much exposed flesh. She had thought it was something more serious and agrees to be more considerate next time. They both blush as they walk back, and she pulls Gojo close as she asks if she should send him a picture of her in the outfit. Our boy immediately freaks out and Kitagawa laughs at him. She feels so much heat and suggests that they take a break. They both head to a manga cafe where she sits super close to our favorite simp. I mean Gojo, not your dad. He's uneasy because of this and screams when he notices that she's reading a scary manga. She introduces him to Bothercubus, a manga where a succubus named Rizu tries to get a novelist to fall asleep. She really likes Rizu, but doesn't want to cosplay her because she feels too ugly to pull off half-up pigtails. Gojo disagrees and even encourages her to go for it. Kitagawa becomes shy and agrees to try it out. When our boy finally discovers what a succubus is, he doubts the book will be as wholesome as Kitagawa claimed, only for him to go through and like it immediately. She steps out and Gojo realizes that the manga is too simple for him to get details on Rizu's outfit. It becomes clear that he'll have to do it himself. They end up leaving at dusk, and days later, our boy ends up in a love hotel. Apparently, Kitagawa lied that they were going to a studio to take Rizu cosplay pictures in a place that looked like the author's room. They had already reached the hotel before she opened up about her mistake. Gojo freaked out and couldn't get over the idea of being in a love hotel. Kitagawa tried showing him other cosplayers who had done it and almost got him down using chocolate. He rebuked her like she was the devil and she left to change in the bathroom. After noticing the jacuzzi, Kitagawa asked our boy to join her and he froze right up. Back to the present and Gojo trembles as he awaits Kitagawa. He tries watching some TV, but they have some lewd stuff on there too. She then barges in to express how much she loves the outfit. Gojo quips that he researched normal succubi and did a representation that fit Rizu. Kitagawa then calms him down and reminds him that he makes the best outfits. He then finishes up her makeup with her ears, wig, teeth, and tail. Our boy tells her how beautiful the wig is, and she, in turn, likes the outfit. They begin taking pictures using the props Gojo had bought and change poses until it's time for the lullaby shot. It's not quite right, so our boy asks her to lay on top of him for the shot. She's the shy one, but she barrels through until the shot comes out perfect. While they're expressing how much fun they had, they hear fun noises from the neighboring room. And this makes Gojo conscious of his situation. His attempt to get her off of him leads to him grabbing her waist and the lights going off. They slowly pull closer to each other as they breathe heavily. It's too bad that reception calls to tell them that they're out of time. Kitagawa then excuses herself to go pant in the bathroom. They're both shy as they leave and even run into the couple from next door. Our boy gets home and literally beats himself up over Kitagawa. Gojo is working on a Hina doll when Kitagawa texts him. He pays her a visit and she laments about her father not coming for the summer fest and having to do her homework. Our boy then stumbles on her picture in a magazine and she explains that she's posing to gather money for a camera. Kitagawa suggests that they pause and watch a scary movie. One would expect Mr. Wuss to be scared, but he smiles all through. 
Unlike Kitagawa, who trembles like a fish outside water, she rounds up her English homework and celebrates not having to do math. She realizes soon enough that she left her workbook at school and Gojo escorts her to go retrieve it. He also invites her for dinner and they stop by the school swimming pool. She plays around and almost drowns. Luckily, Captain Wuss dives in to save her. They sit and talk about how Kitagawa likes the beach but can't swim and he admits that he likes Hina dolls but can't draw their faces. They both laugh it off, and she offers to invite him if she finds a summer fest that's still running. She does find one, and Gramps sees Gojo off, telling him to have fun. They finally see each other in the crowd. Kitagawa tells him that she loves his Jinbei, and our boy really loves her Yukata. She shows off her neck because she knows Gojo likes it and begins to buy everything edible in the fest, leaving our simp to pay. They then head to the square to watch the fireworks, and it captivates them both, especially Gojo, who had always been indoors for these events. This time, he was grateful to be here with Kitagawa, and he stares at her until she locks eyes with him too. She ruins the mood by sticking out her tongue though. Karma gets her back by chaffing her feet, but our boy has to give her a piggyback ride to go buy some band-aids. On their way, they talk about how they had a nice time and Gojo's heart feels like it got a hug when Kitagawa says they'll go to the festival next year too. Our boy's about to go to bed when Kitagawa calls to tell him that she can't sleep. Apparently, she watched the sequel to the horror movie they saw together and now finds everything scary. She begs him to stay on the line and they both put their phones on speaker after a long period of gossiping about all her friends, she tells Gojo that she's now calm. He admits that the year has been fun and falls asleep soon enough. Kitagawa then uses this opportunity to tell him that she loves him. If you enjoyed, make sure to subscribe for more weekly anime recaps.